Welcome back to Fast Market, everyone. Kevin Hinks back here for the second segment of our show. Nick Theodorakis has stuck around. He's going to join me for the rest of the show. Now let's bring in Landon Swan, the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, to the show. He's going to look at our feature stock of the day, and that is Etsy. Landon, you've got a bunch of data, and here's where everything rhymes on some days, Landon. All your, some of your data has all three of the names we're talking about here today. I love when that happens. Landon, what are you seeing here in Etsy and online retailers in general? Yeah, so Etsy's kind of tough to bring in comparisons, right? I think the closest is probably eBay. Uh, but, you know, we also include Shopify and Amazon because they're online retailers. But it's really tough to compare exactly to Etsy uh, because they're pretty unique. You know, they created a space. They're dominating that space. It's a great company. Um, and when you look at how well they've done over the last few years, you know, COVID really helped this company. They, you know, they were there in the right place. Uh, people needed things that they couldn't get, especially supply chain issues. Their custom products made and shipped to them. And you can see this in the blue line here. That's the that's the number of people talking about Etsy just in general. Uh, the the gray line being the stock chart. So you can see. You know, the data led the run up very well. We've been bullish on this company for quite a while. They had a nice run up there to, to nearly 300. Uh, big, big pullback since down about 60% since all time highs. And they've sort of established a base now as far as mentions go. And they're starting to ramp back up just a little bit. But I think the story is that people discovered this company and started using it in a way that they weren't before through COVID. And Etsy has taken advantage of that. You know, they've got, uh, all of their numbers are up. Active sellers are up significantly. Active buyers are up significantly. Uh, they're, they're doing much better than eBay on that front. eBay is actually losing active sellers, losing active buyers, probably to Etsy. Uh, they've actually got um, around 36 million repeat buyers. And if you look at their habitual buyers, that's an 8.1 million uh, user number. And that actually accounts, it's only 9% of buyers, but it accounts for 45% of buys. So you've got some power buyers on Etsy and some repeat customers. So on this chart though, I'd like to, to just take a minute because we, we throw this kind of chart up a lot. The X axis is the purchase intent our total mentions actually. So you wanna be more to the right. That's where people are talking more about the company. There's more buzz. And the vertical axis, the Y axis is happiness. So you wanna be up. Uh, so up and to the right's where you wanna be. And Shopify dominates that spot. It's a tough one to compare to Etsy. So we also wanted to include eBay and, and even Amazon. So if you took Shopify out of this, you would see that Etsy is absolutely dominating eBay. They'd be in the top right. When you include Shopify, you know, there's a little bit of a discrepancy, but again, it's not the exact same business. So I think you can be bullish on both of these, Shopify and Etsy. Um, I do think that, you know, between the two of Etsy and eBay, it's very clear that Etsy's dominating here. They're doing much better. Uh, their purchase intent numbers are positive. Uh, also, side note, our correlation numbers for purchase intent to revenue is a 0.82, which if you're into stats, that's a very high number. It goes from negative one to positive one. So 0.82 is very strong, meaning that like folio data is very predictive on this company. Uh, and one of the reasons that we've done very well on it on the past. Right now, I'd say we're leaning bullish. Um, I think that they have the, you know, they have the base of users and they've established a stickiness with a very high level of happiness at 75% to get people to continue to come back, to get sellers to start offering more items, bring in more sellers, bring in more buyers. So I think they're in a great position to move forward. And you could argue that the stock is on sale right now. Um, it's, you know, obviously it's a very risky environment. There's a lot of volatility, but based on where it's at versus all time highs, I think it's a good buying opportunity here long-term. Um, and I, I really do think that at these valuations, this company is well positioned to outperform competitors over the next you know, six months, 12 months, maybe 24 months. It's interesting when you put the, the kind of discount to the stock price <clears throat> relative to, to sort of the sentiment out there in the world, right? Like, you hear a lot of people saying, like, if I'm going to pay more, I want to sort of buy local. And there's sort of the the online version of shopping local. And I think that, that's interesting right. to kind of you know put it in that in that context. Um, yeah, question on what you said a few minutes ago. And I think I, I think I heard this right. But you said like eight, it's kind of the 80-20 rule you discussed. Right? There's like a, a very small percentage, 8 percent, maybe you said of, of, of repeat buyers that drive so much of the performance. Do you have context on on the others in this space, particularly the, the eBay comparison? like. How much of the volume is going through a, a small percentage of the 
of the users. And is that concerning or is that, you know, is that a really strong thing? And that's a, a kind of a, a growth aspect where they could get more people engaged on a more regular basis, do you think? Right. I think that's the question is, is it, is it, would you want more a higher percentage of uh, revenue coming from a small, small percentage of buyers? I don't know. I know that eBay is losing buyers and sellers. I don't know what if they have that, you know, power user as well. But when you just look at, by the way, the number was 9% of buyers account for 45% of uh, volume, dollar volume on uh, Etsy. When you look at that, they call that a habitual buyer. I'm not sure exactly how they define that, how many buys per month that requires, but their definition um, if you look at that that definition, it's actually up 25% year over year from six million to eight million. So, um, so you would actually it's a little bit less, six and a half to eight, something like that. But you definitely want more of that type of buyer. Uh, and then, of course, as you get more of that type of buyer, the percentage is going to go up. So, uh, I I do love that they're gaining there, and they're actually gaining sellers. So the sellers are up about 72% year over year. Buyers are up 18% year over year. So both groups are growing, and I think that obviously that's the that's a thriving ecosystem. When you're a buyer, you want to see lots of options to buy from. When you're a seller, you want to have a lot of people bidding on your stuff. So uh, this is a very healthy company with very happy customers. That's the other comparison I think that's important is that eBay is sitting at 65% happiness where Etsy is sitting at 75% happiness. So people like the, they like the website more. They like the products more. They're, it's just overall that this company is just doing better than eBay. They're kind of, they're kind of stealing their thunder. eBay was on a little bit of a comeback tour, right? We all thought they were dead in the nineties. They're coming back mm -hmm. and now Etsy's kind of stealing their thunder and they've become the, the COVID darling, I think for online customized buying. You know, you're right. The, the more I think about this, Landon, this is a tricky comparison between let's say Shopify, which helped people set up their businesses. Etsy doesn't hold inventory, am I correct? They, right. they just line up buyers and sellers very similar to eBay. They just do it a lot better. And Amazon does hold inventory, right? They, they're, they're heavy inventory in terms of them. So really, th th this really is a comparison between eBay and Etsy. And in that comparison, they're killing eBay, which is sad to think that eBay's been around since the 90s. And, and still couldn't get this right. And the opportunity missed if eBay would have gotten it right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And this is, I think this is a great time for Etsy because if you look at all the, the macro trends that we track, uh, while e-commerce is actually down year over year, uh, people talking about e-commerce, if you talk, if you focus in more narrowly on mobile shopping, it's actually up significantly. So people are, are getting off of laptops and off of PCs and onto their phones to shop more and they're going into stores more. So uh, Etsy, you know, obviously not benefiting from the stores, but mobile commerce is doing well and their mobile platform is very, very strong probably stronger than eBay's and that accounts for, I think, a lot of the growth and the happiness. That mobile Nick, do you have any other really questions before we move on to the me. trade? Uh, I'll say that, that mobile aspect is a, is a fascinating thing for me because you go out there in the world, right? You go to the mall, you go wherever you're going now as, as people kind of unmask a bit and go out. And then you still want to compare that to something that isn't in front of you, right? So I think Etsy's in a really unique spot. You go into a, you know, a big box type store, you go on your, your Etsy app and you're looking for something that's maybe a bit more bespoke. So I think that that mobile aspect, I think, is a really great point you bring up, Landon. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, question, think, but I think that's a fascinating development. I think Etsy's just in a great position from COVID. I mean, it was a good company before, but they brought in so many people uh, shopping online and discovering the company. And then with supply chain issues, you couldn't get something that you wanted. So you maybe went somewhere else. Etsy's got handmade, you know, handcrafted, customized things. And all of a sudden you get these very satisfied customers and they're bringing them back. So uh, they took advantage. They're in the right place at the right time. They had a strong business going into COVID and COVID just made them that much stronger. All right, Landon Swan, co-founder of likefolio.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show as always. We always appreciate the data and the information that Likefolio brings to your show. Thanks for coming on, Landon. Have a great day. It's actually getting warmer in the Midwest, Landon. So soon, you know, not as warm as Florida, but we're getting there. We're starting to get there. It's actually Enjoy sunny it. out today, which we'll take. Landon, have a great day, sir. Thanks, guys. All right, Nick. You know.